Hello, I'm Damon Flurry. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at SpyCloud, and I'm joined here by Trevor Hillegas, who's our Vice President of SpyCloud Labs. You may have seen on our blog that we have been posting a lot of information about the mother of all breaches that several weeks ago, from the time that we're recording, um, came out and created quite a stir within the security community. We at SpyCloud have done a lot of work. And by we, I mean SpyCloud Labs, Trevor's team, have done a lot of work in understanding what, what Moab is and how it impacts the larger community. And we'd like to talk about it for just a few moments. Um, so thanks for joining us, Trevor. We'll say hello. Thank you. All right. So let's get into it. Trevor, can you tell us about Moab? What is this data leak? Why is it a big deal? Yeah, so Moab, um, mid-January 2024, uh, a bunch of cyber security focused news uh, organizations started covering this as a, a unitary breach. It is, in fact, not a unitary breach. What we're talking about is basically an aggregation of a little north of 4,100 individual breaches uh, collected over a pretty large period of time, potentially ranging from the early 2010s um, to about 2023 or so. Um, so that's about 26 billion records uh, within the Moab. It's important to note, too, that that number is pre-processed. So we'll kind of get into this in a few questions, not to do a little bit of foreshadowing, but um, there was a lot of du duplication within this data. So 26 billion is a, a, uh, a pretty big number. It's, it's likely much less than that. Um, but to put that in perspective, so we, we did analyze the data against um, SpyCloud's holdings, and we found that approximately 14% by record count um, was already in SpyCloud's holdings. It represents about 94% of the Moab data, uh, those records that we talked about. Uh, and that, that equates to about 10% of the total number of breaches that SpyCloud has ingested. So this is a, a massive amount of data, certainly, uh, but when you kind of compare it to what has been historically publicly available, and certainly what we've already collected and normalized, it becomes uh, a much more digestible number. So can you tell us a little bit more about how this data ended up getting out there? What's the story behind? Yeah, so uh, December timeframe of last year, so 2023, um, there was a, an Elasticsearch cluster that was left exposed, uh, unsecured on an IPv6 address, uh, and it was um, available to be acquired. Um, we have no idea how long that uh, elastic cluster had been exposed. No idea who uh, else had obtained that data previously. Um, there has been a, an organization that has come out publicly and claimed um, uh, authorship of that of that database. Um, we have no information to uh, authenticate those client claims at this point. Um, but over the ensuing about a month towards the middle of January, uh, SpyCloud Labs began digging into the data and uh, finally kind of getting our, our hands around it because uh, it was quite a large amount of data, um, even though it was relatively normalized uh, you know, at, at the beginning. Excellent. And are there any like specific um, artifacts within this? Can you tell us anything about the breaches that were within Moab that are interesting? Yes, a lot of highs and lows. Um, so we did, we did find some interesting things in there uh, that are worth talking about. Uh, one of the kind of highlights, and we mentioned this in our blog as well, uh, is a previously undisclosed QQ breach um, at about north of 700 million unique um, QQ logins, uh, users uh, rather. Um, so that'd be like QQ, the email address, the QQ username, and a phone. Um, but for every fantastic uh, new net new uh, breach, there was several that were, um, well, less so. Um, so a couple of those that, that stand out to me, uh, there was a claimed breach of AAA. So that's the, if you're in the United States, that's the company that will bring you a, a can of gas if you are like me and uh, like to play a dangerous game of chicken with your, uh, your uh, gas tank in your car. Um, however, once we take, took a look at it, it was pretty clear that it was in fact not a breach of the American Automobile Administration Association, uh, but in fact, Ohio voter registration data from a much earlier and public breach. Um, there was also another one that was claimed to be an eHarmony breach that turned out to be a whole bunch of random passwords and hashes. Um, no idea where that came from. Um, and then obviously many, many others that we ended up having to throw away because they were either uh, mislabeled, um, almost entirely duplicative, or just uh, 
unable to be understood. Excellent. So when Spy, when Spy Cloud digests all this information, when we figure out what each of these breaches are, what do we do with it? Do we notify people that were impacted by this and their data was stolen long ago? Yeah, yeah. So um, parallel in parallel with our kind of parsing and ingestion uh, process, we uh, our responsible disclosure uh, organization within SpyCloud Labs was very, very busy. Um, so we uh, have been going through this data extensively, um, identifying anything that was new, uh, especially because, you know, these breaches that get a lot of public um, notice, obviously people that have their names, companies that have their names in these um, breaches that don't have the ability to see the data, um, there's a lot of uncertainty there. So we have uh, accomplished uh, dozens of responsible disclosures over the past couple of weeks through this data, which is just us responsibly handing off the data to the company. Uh, that was impacted or allegedly impacted. Um, some of those, we've gotten some feedback that says, cool, thanks, but uh, this is not us and it's junk, which is fantastic. Obviously, that's the response we want to receive. Um, others have been very grateful uh, that we were able to give this data to them. So um, that's also a good feeling um, when, we can, when we can do that. And the process is not over. So we sit here in February of 2024, I anticipate... There will be many of these um, obviously tapering off, but into the next few weeks and or months as we uh, finish sorting through this data. Excellent. So so we collected at SpyCloud all this data. We went through it. If I was already a SpyCloud customer, what is the difference for me that SpyCloud now has Moab? Was this already, if these were older breaches, was I already covered? Yeah, yeah, pr pretty pretty minimal. So, you know, I don't want to I don't want to minimize that we we pulled in when this is all said and done, probably about 1.6 billion net new records, which, you know, a huge number sounds like a, a scary number. Uh, but if you kind of compare that to the 92 ish billion records that we already had, um, puts it a little bit into context. Um, so we at SpyCloud Labs have analyzed the data. And we believe that there's right about 94 or 95% uh, overlap. Uh, with the Moab data that was with SpyCloud data that was already within our, our holdings prior to Moab. So basically what this means is we're just closing that 6% gap from Moab, which really, if you put that in perspective of the data that SpyCloud already has is, you know, 1%, if not less. Excellent. All right. Thanks, Trevor, for sharing your thoughts about this. Um, if folks would like to know more about um, more about our interactions with Moab, please come to the SpyCloud Labs website. Um, and also check your exposure. So if you'd like to know if your data was within any of these breaches, you can get a view of that at spycloud.com. Click on the check your exposure link and you can learn more about where your data shows up and whether it was in these breaches.